Hey there, fellow anime enthusiasts, and welcome back to Anime Stark, the channel where we dive deep into the captivating world of anime. I'm, Rishi, your guide through the multiverse of anime possibilities. Today, we embark on a thrilling journey, exploring a tantalizing what-if scenario that's been buzzing in the anime community. What if Naruto, the beloved ninja from Konoha, was actually a descendant of Toborama Senju, the second Hokage, and went on to become an even greater legend. This is part one of our epic exploration, and believe me, it's going to be a ride filled with surprises, and twists. But before we jump into this alternate reality, make sure you're subscribed to Anime Stark, hit that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up if you're as excited as I am to unravel this incredible story. Now, grab your headbands, summon your chakra, and let's begin this journey into the unknown. Konoha. Senju Compound. Two years later. It's fascinating how time passes when you give it the opportunity. Time can be one of the most despised things in the world. It seems to crawl when you want it to move quickly and races by when you're doing something you enjoy. Time can be considered the world's greatest enemy, but it's one you can't defeat. In the end, everyone is defeated by time because the only thing that survives time is time itself. Now, Naruto had spent the last two years in the Senju compound. There, he had used his time wisely. Considering that he hadn't even been taught to read and write properly in the orphanage, he had invested his time intelligently in becoming the best shinobi possible. A challenging task, but with the right guidance, anything could become achievable. Some might even be surprised at how strong a person can become. Of course, first, Naruto had to accept the harsh realities of life. Realities he had never considered before. He was the heir to two of the three founding clans of Konoha. Just that fact possibly made him one of the most powerful individuals in Konoha. You see, the founders had a right of veto, meaning they could prohibit certain laws as long as they provided a logical reason behind it. He was well aware that this was not a power to be abused. His time in the compound had been well spent. On one hand, he had to learn to read and write properly. Who knew the damage not knowing how to do it intelligently could have caused, as it might have led him to underestimate the information in books. Naruto shuddered at the thought. His mentor, Toburama, had made it clear that there was no greater power than knowledge. Another crucial lesson he had learned was that all things required effort, sweat, and tears. The only reason so-called prodigies were revered was that they achieved something faster, but in doing so, they often overlooked the most important thing, hard work. It was necessary. Hard work was of the utmost priority. Naruto wasn't a prodigy, that had been clear. But he was an instinctive genius. He knew how to properly unleash his abilities with a little guidance and teaching. That gave him a clear advantage over others. Of course, some might think that was unfair, but Toburama had taught him a valuable lesson in understanding how the world worked. Toburama's valuable lesson was as follows, nobody plays fair. When someone says something is cheating, it's mostly an attempt to block someone's progress just because they can't advance in the same way. They use their own form of cheating to try to limit the other person in question. It was cheating from another perspective, leading people not to do what they had to do by any means. Naruto had also learned a valuable lesson from Toburama, you're not born strong or weak. You're born normal. And only by the amount of work you put in is it decided whether you're strong or weak. The strong person is someone who dedicates themselves entirely to effort and continuous work, determined never to remain stagnant. That's the way of the strong. The weak, on the other hand, were those who decided they didn't want to put in the effort. Naruto had discovered from Toburama that the situation in Konoha was not good. Once, Konoha had a powerful elite Jonin army that led the front lines of battles. Now, they were weak. Ninjas unable to fight as they once did. Most of them didn't progress simply because they didn't see the point. They didn't see anyone who served as an adequate example. In Naruto's opinion, that was a real shame. And Naruto could relate. Why did people want to be weak? Being weak meant anyone could walk all over you. Naruto didn't want that. He wanted to be strong and powerful. He wanted to become a ninja who couldn't be beaten in any way. Of course, Naruto knew it was a tough task. After all, nothing in life was easy. Naruto also knew perfectly well that although it might be tough, he had no intention of being defeated in any way. That's why he trained the way he did. He had intense training, which was due to his Uzumaki and Senju blood combined, as his mentors had told him. In his case, it had to be this way because he had an overwhelming amount of energy. One thing that came with being Senju and Uzumaki was a monstrous amount of physical energy. Both Senju and Uzumaki were known for their powerful bodies and chakra. That meant Naruto had to train seriously if he truly wanted to be considered strong enough because any half-hearted training would fall short. Unfortunately, that was an absolute rule. 
something that had to be done by all means. Of course, with all of this came its advantages. Naruto loved training. He loved the feeling of getting stronger. In two years, he had changed. He was no longer malnourished, as the first thing he was taught was the henge technique. He entered the markets with money, which, by the way, he took from people since he didn't have access to the Senju or Uzumaki clan accounts at the moment, and came out loaded with food. Another important aspect of Senju and Uzumaki was rapid maturation. Due to the determining factor that their bodies grew faster and stronger, their bodies matured earlier to reach their peak physical condition. It was a bit of a shortcut, but it was quite logical because, after all, Senju and Uzumaki were characterized by their incredible physical energy, so it was natural for them to reach their physical potential as soon as possible before any other clan. Toburama looked at his descendant with a sense of pride. Two years, and the boy had proven to be a genius. Unlike the so-called prodigies, Naruto had greater control over various areas. The first thing to note about him was his monstrous amount of energy. He was possibly a power class ninja more than his own brother. If this boy had received the Makutan like his brother, he would be even better. But Toburama knew better. He knew he couldn't let his guard down in any way. He knew people wanted nothing more than to tear him apart. He had traveled through the village. He wanted to see what had happened in the last few years since he had trained Minato. What he saw did not please him. In fact, it infuriated him considerably. It angered him beyond any doubt because if there was one thing he hated, it was senseless actions, something the village had been characterized by in recent times. To begin with, the village seemed to be solely focused on hating the boy just for being a Jinchuriki. He had to make an inhuman effort to restrain Mito, who wanted to remind those people that they were beneath contempt. They might be mere puppets with only a tenth of the chakra they once had, but Mito could easily create a bijou bomb with her fuinjutsu and blow up half the village. Another aspect was that he had eavesdropped on a council meeting, apparently, no one had found his listening seals yet, and they wanted to erase the history of the Uzumaki clan. To protect Naruto. It was comical to see the entire council remember that this was a dictatorship. It seemed that Naruto's disappearance had hit his old student hard, as he had no tolerance for actions that tried to harm the boy. He knew that as soon as Naruto reappeared on people's radar, there was a good chance they would try to persuade him to join their side. Completely foolish if you asked him. Once, within a year, due to his entry into the academy, there was a good chance he would be called to the council to know what had become of him. He would ensure that his great-grandson was more than ready to deal with the politicians who would undoubtedly try to turn him into a puppet or a breeding machine. Completely foolish if you gave it a single thought. Naruto knew perfectly well what he was getting into, and he would give him advantages. After all, people had weaknesses in every sense. And, to be honest, he had other interests that were just as big and important. For example, he knew a law that was very significant, Naruto needed allies. He needed people he could trust. Being a lone wolf was stupidity. It had been proven that lone wolves always died. He didn't have that in mind for his descendant. So, he had spent some time keeping an eye on different children with potential all over Konoha. He had seen people with potential, that was certain. He had seen people with the ability to show strength and power, and he was more than sure they would stand out above the rest. But he had seen them not only in children but in teenagers and almost adults as well. People who genuinely appreciated hard work and effort. People who could truly be powerful if given the opportunity. He was a pragmatic man who would do everything in his power to achieve his goal, and he had seen that potential without much difficulty. Some might consider this cheating, but from his point of view, more than cheating, this was doing them a solid favor. They clearly needed help. These people wouldn't mature fully as things were today. They didn't have the hope of becoming the best ninjas they could be. He knew that children, although they might not entirely agree with intense Uzumaki class training, could be taught properly. He just needed to give them the right push down the right path. And he knew that Naruto could do it, of course. He knew that charisma could help in many ways. He knew that charisma could elevate young people a step above where they were. But he also knew that not only charisma but fear had to be employed by any means necessary. In his time, it wasn't just his presence that made ninjas train, but also fear. When people don't fear something, unfortunately, they don't grow. They don't mature. They don't get better. They don't try in any way to become better. That's a serious problem that must be addressed as soon as possible. It's a problem that shouldn't be allowed to flourish. That's why fear, along with the right motivation, can turn many ninjas not only unstoppable but into true beasts capable of great effort. It was a way of thinking that many would classify as unpleasant, but he? Toburama was clear about several things. First, the survival of his team's people was more important. 
If he had to instill fear in them and do everything in his power to make those people grow in power, he would do so without a doubt. And that is why I was partly pleased with Hiruzen. After Naruto's disappearance, it felt as though something had struck him. He had swiftly surveyed the academy to gauge the situation. What he discovered did not sit well with him, leading him to execute a Chunin who worked for the Civil Advisory Council, an individual they believed was the best way to save money. He was content with his pupil. Hiruzen had placed his trust in the village to care for and raise a defenseless child who had done no harm to Konoha. Yet, they had spit in his face. Anger can sometimes be one of the most potent motivators, and he concurred with what his student had chosen to do. He was determined to make it clear that the shinobi force was entirely under his control, and he would not tolerate a weak military force. Meanwhile, Mito was engrossed in other matters. She held in her hands a very special mask, the Sinigami mask. After taking a closer look at Naruto's seal, she had decided to delve deeper into her investigation, uncovering information that was exceptionally unique and, in her opinion, potentially bad news. She was well versed in chakra and its usage. They had discovered that the chakra channeled through Naruto's seal was pure yang. This was a concern. While it provided him with incredible regeneration, monstrous reserves, and impressive physical strength, the excess yang chakra was also harming Naruto. On one hand, with so much physical energy in his system, there were high chances that he might not fully harness his brilliant mind. She had gleaned much information from the seal. To begin with, the seal was a creation powered by the Sinigami, a masterpiece crafted by the Uzumaki clan solely for sealing entities that posed a genuine threat to them. To date, it had only been used on three occasions by the Uzumaki themselves, primarily to seal high-level demons that had somehow tried to reach them, drawn by the abundant life force they possessed. Then she had discovered why it only emitted Yang Chakra. Minato, in his infinite wisdom, had divided the chakra. Judging by Naruto's age and the age of the seal, she could deduce that the seal was placed on Naruto when he was a newborn. Knowing this, it wasn't difficult to understand why he did it. While Naruto's body might have accepted the Kyuubi's chakra, it could have been negatively affected. She then remembered that there was a way to release Minato. She had searched for and found the required object, the Sinigami mask. With this artifact, she had planned to free Minato and subsequently summon him with the Edo Tensei, thus reclaiming the other half of the Kyuubi. It was the best plan she could think of, one that would provide them a clear advantage in assisting Naruto with his predicament. The truth was, a part of her wanted to do this, if nothing else, to reprimand Minato for leaving his son alone in the world. She couldn't accept that. After all, Minato should have had a contingency plan. That was rule number one in the ninja world, contingency plans. There always had to be plans in case something like this happened. She also wanted to do it because she had seen Naruto suffer. There were nights when he had nightmares, crying out loud, pleading for his parents to come back, begging not to be abandoned. Just that had made her realize that Naruto had inner demons, and she held Minato responsible for not doing an adequate job. And if there was one thing Mito despised with all her might, it was children suffering. She was a woman who had grown up in a clan that was constantly under attack. They had as many orphaned children as the Senju. That's why she had grown to despise parents who abandoned their children without a glimmer of hope. She would be more than capable of destroying hundreds of enemies for doing so. It's incredible. Two years. He's had two years, and he's already so strong. I've never seen such potential, Mito. Not even my brother had a fraction of the immense potential Naruto possesses. I can say with absolute sincerity that this child will not only surpass us but become incredibly formidable. For Toborama, it was a source of pride to witness Naruto's growth in just two years. It's natural. He's not just a prodigy but a genius, someone who doesn't excel in just one skill but specializes in multiple abilities. He reminds me quite a bit of you, to be honest. He is clearly touched by both Uzumaki and Senju blood. I don't think it will be long before he surpasses many of the Chunin in the village. She had complete confidence in Naruto's abilities, knowing he had immense potential ahead of him. Have you thought of a good way to solve his problem? I'm skilled with seals, but I'm nowhere near as skilled as you in that regard, so if anyone can somehow help him with a little issue he has, I'm more than sure it's you, Mito. He had full faith in her. She had demonstrated her sealing abilities on numerous occasions, and from what he could tell, Naruto possessed the same talent. He gave it about six years before Naruto could learn Hiraishin at this rate, judging by the sealing skills he displayed. Quite impressive, to be honest. Naturally, there is no straightforward solution. We have the opportunity to help regulate his chakra, and for now, that's good as it's doing us a favor. But I don't know how much longer we have unless we find a solution. That's why I've decided to take a more drastic step. 
she looked at her brother-in-law, who nodded in understanding. In simple terms, you're going to summon Minato's soul. You'll inform him of the situation. You'll try to learn what happened that day and make the right decisions to address the threat. As always, you're the most dangerous person to play by all means. I believe the nations were saved by your death. God only knows what would have happened if you had lived the extra hundred years you had left. There were times he cursed the seal and what had happened to Mito. Sealing a creature like the Kyuubi into someone as mature as her had shortened her life by half. Naruto's lifespan is greater than mine, Toborama. I'd say he could live up to 300 years old. I don't know how this happened, but his body, his chakra, and everything about him are much stronger than even Hashirama. By the time he reaches his full potential at this rate, he'll be up to five times stronger than Hashirama at his best. And that could be quite terrifying, to be honest. I don't doubt it. If I'm completely honest, I believe it's because he was born with his mother being a Jinchuriki. I have no evidence since, after all, you had your children before having the bijou sealed in you. But I think being born with the bijou flooding his chakra in the womb might have strengthened him in every sense. These were mostly theories, but he had learned long ago that sometimes theories could hold a great deal of truth. It's a rather terrifying possibility if I'm completely honest. If the council learns of this, they could try to turn him into a breeding machine. If we make him strong enough not only to take care of himself but also to eliminate threats, they'll find out soon enough. Before letting him attend the academy in a year, we'll have to teach him about moderation. From what little he had learned about the council, they could be classified as one of the greediest groups he had ever encountered. Tell me exactly what you've discovered to get you this worked up. You're always paranoid, but this is on a different level. What is it about the council that makes you so distrustful of them anyway? It was a question that she supposed had to have a rather unpleasant answer. And only by seeing Toborama become more serious did she immediately know that he had discovered partially disturbing information in his mind, or at least, that's what she thought. Until a year ago, the council, or rather, the old elders of the village, were funding Orochimaru of the Sanin's research into the discovery of transplanting and breeding Keke Genkai. Their goal was to recreate my brother's lineage, and from what I've learned from all this, they have achieved complete success in one of the children. While Toborama trusted Hiruzen to protect his great-grandson, he was suspicious of a man like Donzo. Do you seriously think Donzo would go to the legal limit to get Naruto into his hands? Yes, I agree with you on that. If he discovers Naruto's unique condition, he will try to gain even more control over him, thereby having a future army of cage-class ninjas. Mito was very tempted to see how said ninja would fare against her, although if there was one thing she had learned, it was to distrust appearances. The best approach to deal with this matter is to gather as much information as possible from the entire council. If we have enough blackmail material, we can make the council think twice before making any moves. Donzo is the most challenging one. Although he has been expelled as a council member, he still holds the Shimura clan seat, and he might try to make all the necessary moves to reach Naruto if we don't deal with him promptly. The question is how to proceed with that bastard. We can always use the puppet seal. While Donzo may have placed his men with protection seals on their tongues, the mind is a volatile thing. If we also use someone who is high up in his command network, we'll have a solid advantage over him, at least. It was a challenging possibility, but she had full confidence in achieving it, simply because Donzo would never anticipate it. After all, it was an exclusive Uzumaki seal. Toburama nodded in agreement with Mito's words. She was right, Donzo wouldn't expect that seal at all. It was a seal commonly used by the Uzumaki for infiltrating enemy bases and then turning their user into a human bomb to destroy everything in their path. It wouldn't be an easy task, but fortunately, he knew a few of Donzo's men. So it's settled. We'll do some groundwork. We'll locate one of Donzo's enforcers. From what I've heard, he has many informants. We just need to pinpoint the one who informs him about potential children and apply the seal there. From that point, we'll search among all the dirt of his men and place the other seal on one of them. It's the best way to proceed in my mind. It not only ensures that they know where the children are going but also reveals exactly who they're working for. Very well. That's the best approach, as you've said. However, Donzo is no fool. He probably has surveillance on his own informants and those who work for him. We'll need to be extremely subtle to reach him through any means. Donzo has learned a few things from me, so he's likely to be as paranoid as I was in my time. We have an advantage. On one hand, Donzo won't expect us. He has grown up believing that the quality of Konoha's ninjas has declined, giving us a solid edge in that regard. But anyway, I believe we need to take some action, so please call Naruto. It's time we resolve this. With that said, she created the sealing array for Edo Tensei and placed a poor villager, who had tried to harm Naruto, in the center, 
while she put a mask on another. After calling Naruto, Toburama performed the summoning seals. The ashes immediately covered the body of her victim, forming Minato Namikaze. Needless to say, Toburama had to admit he was surprised. He had summoned Minato with all his might, he was curious about how strong he had become, and he had to admit that his descendant had indeed become a formidable force to be reckoned with. I see, my boy, you haven't lost that habit of studying things even when you know you might be in danger, Toburama spoke with authority, capturing his student's attention. Even in death, he could see the surprise in Minato's eyes because he hadn't seemed prepared to see his master and grandfather once more. If you're wondering how you escaped the reaper's belly, let me remind you that it was the Uzumaki clan that designed that seal, so it wouldn't be difficult for them to nullify it if they knew how you had done it. Moreover, I'm afraid we have to correct a significant mistake you made seven years ago. Mito's voice was as icy as ever. The wooden woman was staring intensely at Minato, which made the cage-level ninja shiver. What mistake did I make before I left this world? If there was one thing he wasn't, it was a person who wasted time. Courtesy of Toborama's lessons, which had made it clear that he had no intention of doing so in this situation. Whatever it was, it could become a real problem if he didn't handle it carefully. You left your son alone, you imbecile. That child grew up without anyone to care for him. He was hated and despised by the village. What measures did you take to ensure that he didn't grow up in such an environment, you idiot? Mito let her anger explode, letting the man feel everything she thought of him at that moment. And it was evident that the man in question was struck, as he had a look of complete disbelief as if he couldn't believe what he was hearing. That's impossible. I left my son in the village, that's true. But he had a godfather in the form of Jiraiya, and besides that, Kakashi was also there to take care of Naruto. As for Naruto being mistreated by them, why would they? They owe him their damn lives. It made no sense in his mind. This shouldn't have happened. This was wrong. His son shouldn't have grown up alone. What the hell had his stupid master been doing? That child was left to starve every day. When the child came to us, he was clearly malnourished. And since then, we've had to watch over his dreams. He has nightmares. He has bad memories due to what the members of Konoha did to him. And he had a few seals on him courtesy of Donzo. Mito looked at the man before her with complete anger. She might have come to care for him, but his stupidity was quite extensive, and this was unacceptable. That can't be. I left Jiraiya as his godfather. Tsunade as his godmother. Kakashi was like a son to me, and I was sure he would take care of my son like a brother. It's impossible that my son suffered so much. Tell me it's a lie. He couldn't believe it. This couldn't be. This shouldn't have happened in any way. He was supposed to have people here to raise his son in his absence. Had his so-called friends betrayed him so much? I don't think you understand what happened. A bijou attacked your home. What did you think Jiraiya and Kakashi would do? Did you seriously believe that with all the damage caused, Konoha could do without two ninjas of such caliber? That was a damn stupid mistake. And Tsunade, you should know that the moment she heard of Kushina's death, she would have dropped everything else. Mito was ashamed of her granddaughter. She was a coward. Minato fell silent. Truth be told, he hadn't thought about that. Once again, he cursed his status as a so-called prodigy. He hadn't thought. He had taken it for granted. That was his biggest weakness. He had taken for granted that, given his position, there would be people who wouldn't dare to attack him. He should have expected an attack at the moment of his son's birth, it was the weakest moment for a Jinchuriki. He cursed himself completely for his failure. What about the clan heads? It's strange to think that they wouldn't agree to raise the Hokage's child, especially the Hokage who saved their lives. As far as I'm concerned, their actions are concerning, at least from my perspective, so explain what has become of those who call themselves my friends. Anger was consuming him completely. He would have no mercy for the so-called friends who had left his son alone when he needed them most. What happened is that your enemies saw an opportunity. Donzo saw the perfect opportunity at that very moment to acquire a Jinchuriki. Fugaku wanted to avoid another potential ninja as strong as you, who had made him look ridiculous. Hyashi felt the same way. They established that if a clan adopted the child, they would most likely gain the trust of a Jinchuriki, making it difficult to prevent a potential rebellion. Tobirama had done some research after two years and had learned all of this from the complaints of the so-called Konoha tank trio, so he was understandably annoyed. Minato became even more furious. These people seemed to think they could get away with it. How amusing. It seemed that he would have to give Naruto some advantages over Fugaku and Hyashi. Danzo would be easier, as he knew his grandfather well enough to understand that he would raise his son with all possible measures to harm him. Quite amusing if you think about it, at least. 
it appeared that it would be his son who would have the means to make both clans, which had been causing trouble for a long time, suffer the most. Anyway, we didn't call you here just to make it clear what a damn mistake you made back then. No. The reason we called you here is that you sealed only a part of the QB in your son. If we want your son to be overwhelmed by the QB's chakra from a single essence, we need the other essence that you possess, Mito finished speaking. She smiled when Naruto arrived. The child looked at his father with a mixture of longing and annoyance. I couldn't seal the entire bijou in my son. He was just a newborn. There was no life force strong enough to handle the power of the QB. I sealed only half of its power because it was the only thing I could do. What makes you think it's a good idea to seal the full power of the bijou in my son, Mito? He stared intensely at this woman. He had no interest in letting his son suffer any harm. Because his body is different. Just think about it. Kushina's ovaries have always received the Kyubi's chakra. They were practically bombarded with that chakra, making them suitable for assimilating the Kyubi's power. Then, Naruto was once again pumped with the chakra of the entire Kyubi in the maternal womb. His body was practically becoming the perfect vessel for the most powerful bijou. He is possibly the only person who could receive the complete Kyubi and use its power without dying. Tobirama had had a lot of time to think about this. Minato pondered for a moment and then came to the conclusion that they might be right. I mean, what they said was true. The bodies of Jinchuriki, even if they didn't use the bijou, had the bijou's chakra in their bodies. Essentially, his son had been born to be the perfect container for the QB, with many more benefits than drawbacks. This was impressive. Honestly, he had never thought about it in his life. But that could also explain Donzo's unpleasant look. If you're looking for evidence, let us tell you what we know. We believe it's the best solution. Anyway, from what we've been able to find out, physically, Naruto is superior to any child conceived in our two clans. Not even Mito or Hashirama, who are among the strongest members, come close to Naruto's potential. And his chakra is incredibly denser and more powerful, he is the right one for the QB. Tobirama had used his limited sensory abilities to better understand the child's chakra. Needless to say, he was quite surprised. I see. Naruto, come here. If what they say is true, then you should be able to endure this. He was going to trust his mentor and family, so he approached Naruto. But before he could take a step, he received a powerful punch to the stomach. Even the immortal body he possessed felt the damage and complained. As far as he could tell, everyone else had been waiting for this. I guess I deserve that, really. And if I'm honest, I think you did very little compared to what your mother would have done if she had caught me in full for what happened to you, my son. And that was an understatement. Kushina would probably have tortured him for days in the worst imaginable ways because she thought he was hurting her son. Not that he could blame her, of course. They always made me believe I had no parents. That I was just another monster who didn't deserve to live. That I was nothing more than a burden, and that's why they got rid of me. Starving, beaten, and sleeping on a stone bed. All this time, I suffered because you didn't make any damn emergency plan. How could you think that was okay? Naruto looked angrily at his father. He had only lived a year of hell, but the words used during that time still haunted his nightmares. Naruto, I know I messed up. It's always been my mistake. I trusted the situation too much. I didn't think there would be anyone who would betray me at that moment. I mean, I was Konoha's greatest asset. A one-man army ninja, so I reasoned it was impossible for someone within the village to betray us in any way. I was wrong. And he still suspected Donzo for it. He seemed to be the only one who had gained anything from it. I'm sorry, it doesn't fix anything. But I forgave you a long time ago, understanding that it's natural to trust the village. I won't make the same mistake. The Senju and Uzumaki clans can't afford an incompetent or weak leader just because I trusted the people of Konoha. They will have to prove themselves trustworthy, and if not, I won't give them anything. Konoha might have a nice ideal, but if the people within the village didn't do everything in their power to prove they deserve that trust, he certainly wouldn't kill himself for them. Minato had to nod. Konoha was much more than just the civilian population. But they had failed his son. He could perfectly understand their decisions. If they really wanted Naruto to trust them, they would have to earn it with sweat and blood. It was understandable. Naruto was an Uzumaki, a person who certainly didn't forgive and forget transgressions against them. Mito had to agree with Naruto. Konoha had done an injustice. Sacrificing a child just because they wanted someone to blame was quite terrible so she understood perfectly why Naruto wouldn't want anything to do with them. It hurt because Konoha had been like a daughter to her, but she could understand it. Toburama couldn't deny it. He believed in decisions. 
Naruto would surely protect the innocent from all harm, but he agreed with him that those who had made their bed should suffer the appropriate consequences of their actions. They had brought it upon themselves, after all. They were their choices. It was something he knew better than anyone. Everyone has the power to choose. The ninja and civilians of Konoha had that power, and they had chosen poorly, so as far as he was concerned, they should pay for their choices, of course. Through reasoning, one arrives at the following conclusion. To begin with, there is the factor that his other half had reached the conclusion that they could not be free, at least not at the moment. His other half had grown fond of Namikaze and considered him a man of honor. This, in turn, contributed to Namikaze's own belief that Hashirama was nothing more than a complete idiot deserving of multiple beatings. It seemed clear that there was no way out of this situation. Why, you ask? Several reasons. Firstly, his other half believed that Minato had done the right thing. Surprisingly, this was indeed the case. Minato had sealed a part of himself within the child because he wanted to ensure, by all means, that the masked one would someday pay for his actions. The yin half had come to the conclusion that Namikaze knew what he was doing and had faith that the people would give his son a chance. It might have been a bit overly idealistic, but Namikaze believed that the populace would prove to be more intelligent. All right, he could acknowledge that his yin half had reached a reasonable conclusion. He could understand what Namikaze had done and why. He was still in a state of fury, and if he had been set free, he would have wreaked havoc on everyone. Namikaze had acted as a true leader should. Leaving him unrestrained was not an option because there was a high likelihood that the masked individual would come for him. With that decided, it was clear that the human was not an enemy. He had earned the respect of his yin half, so he would contemplate what to do about that, even though he had to admit that his yin half might be a bit too proud of their so-called friendship since together they had practically cleansed the Sinigami's stomach. Now that this had been considered, it was evident that he needed to think about the Uzumaki child. After all, the Uzumaki child had done nothing wrong. In fact, he had suffered just as much as he had. Look, having his yin half back had its advantages because he was thinking. He would always hold humans in contempt for attempting to use them as tools, but just maybe, he could establish a bond with the human in the same way he had when it was only his yin half and namikaze. The truth was that when you examine the entire context, it became clear that the child was not his enemy. The child hadn't done anything wrong. Hell, the only thing he could hold against the child was that he was his Jinchuriki. And unlike Kushina, he hadn't been given a choice. It was a complete mess for both of them when you thought about it more carefully. He didn't like that the child had to be sealed inside him, but he certainly wasn't stupid enough to blame a child for ending up sealed. With that said, he decided at that moment that he would see if he and the child could work together. If they could, it would be a good thing. It would be a significant advantage they would have over their adversaries because he was more than certain that no one could ever hope to subdue the power of a bijou along with its human host. That would be an immense combined force. And even more so with this child. There was a reason he was the most powerful bijou of them all. With this in mind, he decided that the best course of action at that moment was to figure out how to get the child to come to him. At least, he thought so until he saw the child standing in front of him. The child had approached him without any trouble. It seemed that his mind had not been entirely consumed by the Yang Chakra within him. At least he wasn't a whiny, clueless brat who had no idea what he was doing. That was very important. Naruto was in the presence of the QB, and he could only find a few words. The first of them was that the creature was simply magnificent and awe-inspiring. A true symbol of power and strength. He could better understand why people referred to the QB as the most powerful of all bijou. Its presence was astonishing. He was sure that there was nothing and no one that could come close to matching that level of power and presence. And if he was honest, it was a bit intimidating because, after all, he was the vessel for such pure, raw power. Kurama had to admit that the kid had guts. He really had guts because he was proving that he could stand in his presence. Although he had lowered his presence as much as possible, he still had enough presence to include the power of one of his tails, no less. It was quite interesting that the child could withstand his presence it seemed that he hadn't ended up with a weak vessel. So, you're the most powerful of the bijou. I have to admit, if this is only a fraction of your power, it makes you possibly the most powerful existence in this world. Anyway, Naruto had to admit that the Kyuubi's presence was strong even if it was just the part he felt. It said a lot about the bijou's control if he could somehow manage the release of his power to keep from scaring him. And you're quite the interesting human child. Something I never imagined I'd see. A human child with all the potential you have. I have to admit, it makes my blood run with excitement for all that you could become, the bijou admitted that the child was interesting. Not many could endure being in his presence. 
that spoke volumes about the child's potential as far as he was concerned, though it was quite obvious that the child was a whole different kind of creature. Well, I've had to survive a few years of Konoha's madness. That can make a person change considerably, to be honest. Anyway, I'm here to ask one thing, can we work together? I believe that together we can undoubtedly go much further and become stronger than anyone can even imagine, Naruto looked at the bijou, curious to hear his sincere response. Oh, an interesting question. I have nothing against you, Naruto. The only people I have something against are Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha. I even semi-accept my previous Jinchuriki. You are the only one who has never been at fault in any of this, Kurama was determined to have this conversation like a civilized being, at least. However, I am a proud being, child. I am the strongest of the nine bijou. I cannot simply allow you to use my power without at least giving me a decent demonstration that you are more than capable of handling it properly. This is my deal, kid. I offer you to subject yourself to tests to see if you can wield the power that belongs to me. Pass the tests, and in return, I will let you use my power, or at least what you earn in using it. It was the best offer he could give to the child, at least for now. Sounds fair. I can't expect you to let me use your power without consequences. I agree with you on that, so I am more than willing to undergo your tests when you instruct me to. Does that work for you? Naruto had to admit that the offer from the most powerful of the bijou was actually quite a good one. The ability to use his power was undoubtedly something many would kill for, and he was getting a chance to use it. Very well, Naruto Uzumaki. You have earned my respect for now. One day, not today or tomorrow, I will subject you to your first test for power, the first tale. Do not expect it to be easy or straightforward, kid. It will be tough and possibly painful. Pass the test. Prove that you are above the others. Show them all that you are truly a warrior. And with that said, he expelled the child from the landscape. He had many things to think about. What was certain, however, was that all of this was going to be a lot of fun, at least for him. Real world. While Naruto had been in his mind, having a dialogue with the most powerful of the bijou, the three veteran ninjas were having their own conversation. Needless to say, the fact that there was a rogue Uchiha out there who somehow knew how to control the bijou was a top-level threat indeed. Another crucial point to consider was the fact that this individual also possessed a highly dangerous space-time technique. Toburama furrowed his brow just thinking about such power. The potential of space-time techniques was nearly limitless. He himself was a master of some space-type jutsu based on fuenjutsu, but this single power could be considered an S-class threat. However, seeing that Minato had quickly discovered his weakness meant, in a nutshell, that they had a brilliant opportunity to put an end to it. No. Toburama knew perfectly well that this meant he would have to train Naruto properly to be ready for a battle against this person. It would be the best way to resolve this as quickly as possible. If they could find a way to eliminate the space-time attack, they would possibly neutralize most of their enemy's offensive power. The good news behind all of this, however, was that it was a Mangekyo attack. Mito considered things. Such a jutsu was indeed dangerous. Not only dangerous but also in the hands of a clear lunatic. She couldn't allow it. She would work on a jutsu to eliminate that technique by any means necessary. She knew it could be quite challenging to do, but it was not impossible. Just a complication, but with enough time, she knew she could accomplish it. That, and well, there was the fact that the jutsu in question required, according to Minato, being in the physical plane at certain times, so they just had to design a ceiling area that would prevent it from leaving the area. So, she thought carefully about how to work on this. Of course, she wasn't foolish enough to think it could be done overnight, but she was quite sure that something could be achieved with a bit of proper work. If it was only about creating a seal that prevented jumping from one plane or dimension to another, she was sure she could work on it. That's it. On the day of the QB attack, someone betrayed us. If I were a betting person, I'd say it was Donzo who betrayed us to somehow get rid of me and gain access to my son. The only words I can use are that I have no other way to prevent this from happening. However, Seeing that Naruto has been attacked by the people of Konoha, especially the clans, I can offer something of incalculable value. Minato had an evil plan to ensure that those who had abused his son would pay with blood for their actions. Don't worry. Both Mito and I will make sure that the jutsu in question is completely eliminated as a threat. But what have you planned for the Hyuga and Uchiha? Tobirama had the feeling that Minato had a plan to deal with those who had offended him the most. It was crystal clear that Minato was not going to show any mercy to his enemies. I do have a plan. 
since that day when you explained to me how conniving both clans could be and how they would go to great lengths to steal my secrets, either with the Sharangan by the Uchiha or the Huga trying to force a political marriage on me, I designed a very special seal, a seal to block the powers of both ocular eyes. Minato saw with a smile how both veteran ninjas were very interested in that. It was a joint effort of Minato and Kushina, of course. Interesting. With that information, it's logical that if the Huga find out, they'll be offended by the fact that they're losing one of their so-called unique powers. Very amusing. And the Uchiha, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to destroy the knowledge of that seal, as it threatens their combat superiority. Toburama never thought he'd be so proud of his student as he was of Minato at that moment. I thought about everything you've taught me, mentor. I thought about how the Huga and Uchiha rely too much on their so-called blessed eyes. What better way to shatter their beliefs than to destroy the power of their eyes, of course. Minato smiled to see that his teacher was so pleased with that. It was clear that Toburama agreed with his actions, and he would as well. Simply perfect in Minato's mind, which was a possible future advantage in Konoha's plan to regain control under the Senju and Uzumaki. It was at that moment that Naruto woke up. He was somewhat disoriented, but at the same time, he had that smile as if he had achieved a great victory over an infallible enemy. And they all understood at that moment that Naruto had managed to obtain something from the most powerful of the bijou. Good news, especially for Minato, knowing that the power of the most powerful of the bijou could be at his disposal. I see that Sleeping Beauty has finally awakened. Tell me, Naruto, why don't you go to the park and see if anything happens? I'm sensing a lot of negative emotions there, and I don't trust what might be happening. And since it's a children's place, I think it's best for you to go. What Mito didn't tell him was that she already knew what was happening. She had a strong surveillance network through seals implanted in Konoha. The reason she was sending Naruto there was that she knew this was too good an opportunity to pass up. Naruto furrowed his brow. This was unusual. He was rarely asked to do something like this. They wanted him to remain as hidden as possible to ensure he wasn't discovered by anything or anyone. But if his grandmother Mito was asking him to do this, she must have known something really valuable. Naruto had nothing to lose, so he agreed to do it, and who knows what his grandmother had planned. Konoha. Central Park. Naruto didn't take long to reach the park. It wasn't that far from the clan's home, really. It was mainly a place where the clan's children gathered to socialize. A very good idea. That is, the best way to create alliances had been shown to be through the children. Anyway, Naruto looked intently at the place from the shadows. The place was deserted since, after all, it was seven in the morning, and he knew that no child would get up at that hour in any way. Naruto looked intently, keeping watch when he noticed a small detail. On a bench, there was a little girl. She seemed to be his age. A girl, and from what he could see with his eyes, she had signs of significant physical abuse. Not wanting to leave an innocent child lying like trash, Naruto approached the girl to find out what was going on. The first thing he realized was that she was a Hyuga. How did he know? Because of the seal on her forehead. It was a slavery seal that he knew was only used by the Hyuga. Naruto used his chakra to sense the girl's body. The first thing he felt was that she had hundreds of bruises on her body. All of it seemed to be aimed at closing her chakra system and preventing her from ever using chakra again in her life. Naruto knew the girl wouldn't survive that. He didn't know exactly what to do, but he decided that he had to save her, so he started sending his chakra through the girl's body. Or at least that was until Kyuubi's voice echoed in his mind. Why are you trying to save her, Naruto? I won't deny that a child has never harmed anyone, but you must know that if you save her, the entire Hyuga clan will come after you in any way they can, wanting to harm you for preventing what they had planned from happening. Kurama was interested in Naruto's response. I don't give a damn about what the Hyuga think. I don't care if they consider me their enemy. Because the moment they even think about taking a step toward me just for this absurd revenge, I will make sure to remind them that there are far more terrifying things in this world than a couple of white eyes or a single blow. I will remind them of the meaning of the word power. Naruto let all his killing intent unfold. If there had been someone nearby, they would have been scared. Although if they had looked more closely, they would have seen some interesting things happening in the park. Ha ha ha, yes. That's what I wanted. A worthy Jinchuriki. Someone who, if necessary, will walk the path of carnage. Yes. This is why I like Toburama Senju so much. He was a man who had no problem killing over a thousand people if it delivered the right message to others. And Mito didn't count because he was still angry with her for being responsible for him being sealed. And to Naruto's surprise, a tail of reddish-orange energy manifested and began to enter the girl's body. Naruto felt all the girl's wounds heal. 
Heck, he even felt the sealed chakra network reactivated. The girl stopped trembling in obvious pain from what had happened to her and continued sleeping. It was clear that Kyuubi had healed the girl's injuries, but it made Naruto wonder what was going on in the mind of the most powerful of the nine bijou. This girl has something that calls to me, Naruto. Call it a strong spirit. Anyone would realize that if she had been given the chance. It's clear that her family turned their back on her. By doing this, we're not only gaining great loyalty courtesy of the girl, but maybe we could help her seriously. Kurama could tell that the girl was strong. She was still alive despite being so brutally beaten, which said a lot about her. A girl so strong cannot be left to die. She must be rewarded, and that's what he was doing. However, when his chakra came more into contact with the girl, something unexpected happened, it adapted. This would mean that the bigger the girl grew, the stronger she would become. Stronger muscles and bones. Larger and better condensed reserves of chakra. He wondered why this was happening, but he wouldn't tell Naruto. It would be fun to see him with a considered rival against him. Perhaps his tail would also help the girl in some way with power. Maybe it would help her see things in a better light. Little did both Naruto and Kyuubi know what this would mean.